So, God to Throne, a Dutch death metal act. Uh, they started up way, way back in the day, uh, 1991. Uh, they've had a slew of releases, 10 in total. Uh, they started off fairly straightforward. They've always really had a sense of melody, uh, maybe a little bit more like Dismember, but they kind of streamlined that approach and mixed it in uh, with the Toxic Touch. They actually had something a little bit more driven, uh, a little sappier, but with the album after that, Passchendaele, they actually scaled it back a bit and started up a trilogy of releases uh, about World War I. Um, very excellent CD, they followed that one up the next year with uh, Under the Sign of the Iron Cross. Another excellent CD, very well produced, gritty, uh, really followed up the vision from the first CD. But shortly after that, they actually went on hiatus. Uh, they didn't know if they really wanted to work on anything ever again. Um, nobody really knew what was going on with them. So, uh, actually they came back fairly recently, about three years ago, and started playing a couple tours here and there. They did 40,000 tons of metal on that ship in the middle of nowhere, and I guess they just decided that, hey, we can do it on a boat, we might as well fucking do it everywhere. So they started doing a whole bunch more, and eventually decided that they were going to finish this trilogy. And here we have the world ablaze all these years later, uh, produced by Dan Swano, uh, really just finishing it off. This is the third album in a trilogy about World War I, and I feel like for the most part they've done an excellent job at tackling that concept. Definitely. The first album in particular really nails it as far as the subject matter goes and the overall concept, it being an, as the name implies, a concept album about Passchendaele. Right. And Under the Sign of the Iron Cross wasn't as focused, it, it had plenty of good songs, but it wasn't as is memorable in the long run in my opinion and there was no overarching concept other than a loosely themed World War One concept. Right. It really lacked the conciseness that Passchendaele had. Uh, it had a lot more variety but it, it just lacked the focus, especially lyrical content. Yeah, and I feel like the uh, songs kind of ran together. Like The Killing is Faceless and Firestorm were relatively similar in the way their choruses and their verse structure and all that worked and the riffs were pretty same. So, with this new album, they decided to mix it up a little bit, and does it work? <sighs> debatable. 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 They definitely vary it up a lot, but I feel like that it loses a lot of the intensity, which, for an album with this subject matter, it hurts it a bit. Yeah. World War One is about brutality and rushing into death and that sort of thing, and I feel like this takes a little more melancholic approach. And it, it may hurt the album, it makes it a little less memorable to me. Yeah, I actually totally agree with that. Um, you could actually really tell just from the first single here, On the Wrong Side of the Wire, uh, that song was uh, fairly melodic, it was slow, it was plodding. Uh, it really wanted to amplify the tension here and bring a lot more atmosphere and mood. But the problem is that it really just kind of dragged on. It, like I said, it just felt like it took too much time to get anything accomplished. Um, maybe a, a really slow and somber solo would help, or some more clean passages would help. And that actually kind of highlights one of the bigger issues with the CD in general, uh, where Passchendaele and the CD after that, under the sign of the Iron Cross, actually had some uh, really adequate clean passages, clean sung passages. This CD just doesn't have any of those at all. And where we do have some more rugged, gruff vocals, the vocals here are especially gnarly compared to some of their older CDs, very weathered sounding, maybe intentionally so, I'm not sure. Um, I feel like that would have really enhanced the CD. Uh, but just kind of going back, uh, yeah, the, the sense of melancholy surrounding a lot of the tracks just is a real detriment to the songwriting in general. Uh, you have tracks that are slower paced, but they're not to the band's benefit at all. They don't seem to know how to write a song that really builds up to anything satisfactory. Uh, you have a song like uh, The Red Army, which really just sounds like a bolt thrower track in every sense of the word, um, which isn't even a good thing in this sense. I feel like it'd be one of the worst songs on a bolt thrower album. Um, but that's a lot of this album is really playing outside of their comfort zones, and really it just, it just hurts. It feels like they played with fire here, uh, kind of found a place they weren't comfortable with, and it just made for some tracks that didn't keep anybody's interest. You have to give them credit for trying to go outside the box and experiment a bit, yeah. but if you're, if you're going to try the atmospheric approach, I feel like 
you're just you're missing a lot of things that would make it more interesting. Like like you said, the clean vocals would have made perfect sense here and would have added to the melancholia of the album, and they they just don't exist. On the subject of the atmosphere, we should probably also talk about the production, yeah. and it's it could be better. I feel like it hurts the album a bit. The album doesn't have enough punch. It doesn't have the punch in a death metal album about world war should have. It's a little too sleek. It's almost like it has production for a melodic death metal album rather than the, the heavy, hard-punching, plotting death metal they're going for. Yeah, definitely. You can definitely tell that Dan Swano has helmed this because it is very clean, very precise. Uh, you can hear all the different details. You'll remember that he's also done, uh, very recently, Insomnium's newest release, uh, and you can hear similarities sonically. Um, but the problem is that you lose a lot of that razor-sharp riffing. The heaviness that God the Throne is known for just seems to be uh, very disappointingly absent. Uh, you can see bands like Hail of Bullets, where they have this just absolutely monolithic, math and massive sound to them, and there's really none of that here. Uh, it's just an issue. It's a big issue, especially considering that I feel like the songwriting could be a little bit better. Uh, makes it a little bit worse in the wrong run. So. All of that negativity aside, there actually is uh, some good here. It's, it's sprinkled throughout, but it is prominent in places. Um, the first three tracks are actually fairly solid. They're not some of the best songs in the back catalog here, but they are well written, smartly written, uh, very uh, concise, uh, very sharp. Uh, that's the intro track here, which I actually really appreciate. Um, it almost sounds like it's set up to glorify the battles. Uh, it sounds like it's just going to be this epic, grand scale, sweeping kind of ode to the end of the war, but it really ends with this blowout. It almost sounds like a shell going off, and that kind of segues very smoothly into the second track here, which is actually my favorite track of the entire CD. That's Annihilation Crusade. It's got a really epic uh, gang chant to the chorus. It's got a very solid solo. It's got some really, really potent riffing here. Um, very, very excellent in general. Um, and then that actually segues quite nicely into the title track, The World Blaze, um, which I think is a little bit of a dip in quality, but it's actually pretty good. Um, I also really like this song. It has this really sweet-ass riff, really heavy, very uh, uh, chugging, but also not plotting to the extent that it just feels uh, aggravating. Um, and then that's kind of where things dip off a little bit. But those three tracks are actually very good indicators. The Guide to Throne still have that energy, that, that aggravation, that, that passion to do something really incredible. Um, that's what kind of gives me hope that they're going to do something a little bit more excellent after this. If we get another album at all. I Hopefully, yeah. We, nobody knows at this point. Yeah. I pretty much see eye to eye with David on this one. I, I feel like the album starts out strong and then dips, but for me it comes back up at the end and I have to give props to new guitarist Mike Ferguson who came into the fold 2015, a year after they reformed the band. His solo contributions on this album are fantastic. Solid. Some of the best the band has ever written. I actually think 11th Hour, the closing track, is the best they've ever done. The, it's not frantic, noisy, and dissonant like a lot of the solos, which I suppose made sense on the faster tracks that they're known for and yeah. usually do. But it's it ends the track. The solo goes to a fade out at the very end of the album as if to signify the end of the war. And I feel like it's a fitting melancholic end. And uh, I wish the rest of the album could have captured that feeling as well as that track and that solo did. Yeah, it definitely felt like the most genuine moment on the entire CD. <clears throat> Um, where they're known for like their more Slayer-esque solos. These have been so refreshing all over the entire CD, uh, even kind of elevating some of the crappier tracks on the CD. Uh, but th this really rounded out the entire package and brought the entire trilogy to a close in a fairly satisfactory fashion. Agreed. Yep. So, overall, um, what will we give this album? Well, I think personally I'd give it a 6. Um, I think personally that it just lacks the punch to really pull off a God to Throne album. It just feels very weak in the songwriting department. And even though it does have a lot of variety, uh, they just feel outside of their comfort zone, a little bit awkward in places. And while there are some highlights here, they don't feel like career highlights. And uh, that's really all there is to say about it.
Yeah, I agree completely. A six sums it up for me. I feel like the potential's still there, and they have this new guitarist who's an excellent soloist, and just bring back the riffs, bring back the intensity now and then, just make it more memorable. The faster songs in here are just kind of pedestrian at times, and I just, I know they can do so much better. They have nine other albums, and for the most part, I'd rather listen to to most of any of those. Yeah. They don't have a single bad album, but this this just isn't one of their best, and I want to see more consistency from them next time around. Definitely. The pieces are there. It's just up to them to put them together into something not garbagey. So, as always, I'm David. I'm Derek. Um...